Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game the video. Today we're taking a look at a Croxa and Kunoros Reanimator deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. So the goal is pretty simple, discard or mill some very expensive creatures and try to bring them back, potentially using our commander Croxa and Kunoros a 6 mana 6-6 six, six, with Vigilance, Menace and Lifelink. And whenever Croxa and Kunoros enters the battlefield or attacks, we may exile 5 cards from our graveyard. When we do, return target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield. So much like the escape on Croxa, we do need 5 cards to exile to enable that ability. So it does require a little bit of setup. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck, which have split up into a few different categories, starting with general purpose interaction, where we have some efficient removal like Source to Plowshares and Lightning Bolt, Thought Seize as Hand Disruption, can also be used used as a discard outlet in a pinch where we target ourselves with Thought Seize to discard an expensive creature. The Spark can exile more expensive permanents. We've got Rip Apart hitting multiple card types. Wrath of God as a powerful sweeper in case we need to search one up. There's Chandra as a planeswalker that can deal damage and also maybe help us ramp by adding double red. The Realm Cloak Giant actually has great synergy with Crocs and Conorus, as it destroys all non-giant creatures with its 5 mana cast off, and Crocs and Conorus happens to be a giant. And then we also have Shadow Skull Smashing, which can be a land or a removal spell, and Cut to Ribbons is also fun to have, as we can potentially mill it and still use the Aftermath half, where each opponent loses X life as a potential finisher, but if we draw it we can also cast Cut to deal 4 damage to a creature, and then still cast the Aftermath afterwards. And then our next section is Mana Acceleration, where Dark Ritual can set up some fun start, especially ramping out something like a Black Market Connections or Frex and Arena to draw two cards per turn. These are just nice card engines, didn't really find a better category for them. We've got Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol and Mindstone as two mana ramp artifacts, just to speed things up a little bit. And Celestis also has the ability to discard cards, so it can function as a discard outlet while gaining some life, so that can also fill our graveyard to enable Croxa and Kunoros, and then Solemn at 4 mana can also find a basic when it enters and draws a card when it dies. Then our next category are discard outlets, since sometimes of course we'll end up drawing the expensive creatures and we want to find a way to put them in the graveyard to not only fill it to enable Crocs and Conorus, but also to have something worth reanimating in the first place. And at 1 mana there's no better card than a Faithless Looting. We've got a Bitter Union at 2, which is an enchantment, can also potentially be sacrificed to give our creatures haste, which could also be relevant maybe can play Croxa and give it haste to reanimate two creatures in one turn, even if it requires a lot of cards in Graveyard for that to happen. We've got Cathartic Reunion to discard two cards and draw three. We've got Faithless Salvaging, which is an instant with rebound to discard and draw, so we can do it twice basically. Thrill of Possibility just does it once, discard and draw two. We've got Thrilling Discovery, which is similar to Cathartic Reunion but also gains a bit of life. Got Fable at 3 mana, not banned in a Historic Brawl luckily, so that can also help us discard while maybe ramping us with the Shaman making treasure tokens. Seize the Spoils discards and draws 2 and makes a treasure. Seasoned Pyromancer can discard non-land cards and make elemental tokens in the process, can also generate value from the graveyard. And then a big score, another way of ramping while discarding and drawing. And Nahiri the Harbinger is one of my favorite planeswalkers, but also happens to fit in perfectly here. The plus 2 lets us discard and then draw. We can minus 2 to exile an enchantment, tapped artifact or tapped creature, and then the minus 8 can also potentially find one of our expensive creatures and put it on the battlefield with haste and then put it back into our hand end of turn. And then our next category are mill effects to help us fill the graveyard quickly to enable Crocs and Conoros. At one mana Stitcher Supplier mills three when it enters and when it dies, so it can potentially mill six all by itself. Altar of Dementia is a bit of a setup card where we can sacrifice a creature and then target player mills cards equal to the sacrificed creature's power. So this gives us a bit of insurance if our opponent manages to answer the first creature we reanimate or maybe our commander, then we can at least sacrifice it and then fill our graveyard to set it up for a second attempt. And then Mesmeric Orb is great too. Whenever a permanent becomes untapped, that permanent controller mills a card, typically used in blue mill decks to mill the opponent out. Here we're pretty happy to just mill ourselves with it instead, whenever we untap our lands and other ramp artifacts. Then Cemetery Tampering can mill 3 every turn, and if we get to 20 cards in graveyard total, we can also cast the Free Hideaway card, which can be fun. We've got the Vulture, mills 4 when it enters. The Slant, we can use the Adventure to mill 4 as well. 
and then a carrion grub mills four and has power equal to the greatest power among creatures in our graveyard, so that can also be a legitimate win condition. And Doom Whisper, six mana, six six flying trample, can pay two life at any point to surveil two, so that can also put two cards into our graveyard to fill it for Crocs and Conoros and set up our draw steps. And then we also have a few cards dedicated to reanimating our creatures. Of course, we can reanimate our creatures with our commander, but every now and then it's nice to have some other ways of reanimating, especially if our opponent managed to answer our commander. Priest of Fell Rites, we can play for two mana and then pay three life to reanimate a creature, so that can set it up very quickly. Can also unearth it for five mana, so if we happen to mill it, we can still get value from it. Then we also have Shieldress Restoration can be cast on turn four, even if it costs us some life. I've also managed to reanimate a Villas with it and then immediately draw a bunch of cards thanks to Villas's ability, so that's pretty fun. We also have Unburial Rites, which can be flashed back for just 4 mana, so if we mill it, it can also generate value, or we can just cast it twice. And then a Liliana Death's Majesty helps us mill additional creatures into the graveyard with a plus 1, and then a minus 3 also gives us an additional reanimation effect. And finally, Breach the Multiverse will mill 10 cards before reanimating a creature or planeswalker from both players' graveyards. And then we finally get to the more exciting category, which are the expensive creatures we're trying to put into play. And those include a Burning Rune Demon at 6 mana, which gives us a tutor effect, which is actually pretty effective here, as we get to choose two cards in our deck, and one of them the opponent can put into our graveyard, the other one goes into our hand. So sometimes we just want two sweepers, and we can search up Wrath of God and the Realm Cloak Giant, and still end up with one of them. Sometimes we just want to get two very expensive creatures, and then no matter what, one of them will end up in our graveyard to reanimate with Croxa and Kunoros, so that can also be very effective. Then we've got Noxious Gearhulk, which gives us a bit of removal and life gain on a stick. We've got Ancient Copper Dragon making treasures if it hits the opponent after rolling a d20. Combustible Gearhulk, also very effective since the opponent's unlikely to want to take the damage, since that could add up quickly in this deck, and then it ends up drawing a bunch of cards. We've got Itali Primal Storm to cast some of our spells for free. Unfortunately, can't play the new 7-mana Itali since it has a green color identity, so we cannot play it in our Mardu Commander deck. And then Aurelia the War Leader, also recent addition from the Multiverse Legends, fits in perfectly, giving us an additional attack step, and a ton of our creatures have a powerful effect when they attack or when they hit the opponent, so that can also get out of hand quickly. We've got the Ancient Gold Dragon, making 1-1 Fairy Dragons when it hits the opponent, equal to our d20 roll. Then Elish Norn giving opposing creatures minus 2 minus 2 while pumping our team. We've got Sarah's Emissary, which can sometimes just win the game by itself, naming creature, so opposing creatures can no longer deal damage to us thanks to the protection, but can also kind of name something else if it lines up better. The Ancient Brass Dragon also helps us reanimate more creatures if it hits the opponent. Shieldred Whispering 1 makes the opponent sacrifice a creature each turn, while it helps us reanimate additional creatures from our graveyard. And then Balefire Dragon, a relatively recent addition on Arena, a 6 6 flyer that when it deals combo damage to a player, it deals that much damage to each creature that player controls, so repeated board wipe. And then as a Talpa 4-8 with Flying, Double Strike, Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructible, pretty difficult for the opponent to interact with. And Avacyn makes everything indestructible once in play, an 8-8 with Flying, Vigilance, and Indestructible itself. Then we've got Villas, which will draw cards whenever we lose life on an 8-8 flyer. And Gristlebrand is finally on Arena. The 7-7 with Flying and Lifelink can pay 7 life at any point to draw 7 cards, so that can also quickly replenish our hand, and can potentially discard a bunch to hand size to then fill the graveyard for Croxa and Kunoros once again. Used to be the premier reanimation target or card you want to cheat into playing older formats like Legacy. While that has shifted slightly in recent times, it's still an incredibly powerful card to get in play ahead of schedule. And then a Cityscape Leveler, 8-8, that has Trample. Whenever it attacks, we can destroy up to one, target a non-land permanent, and replace it with a Power Stone token, and has Unearth for 8 mana as well. Then our mana base is pretty straightforward, a couple basic lands here, and then Igancho, Abandoned Mire, also great synergy as it can mill additional cards into our graveyard, Crucible to make 1-1s, one and then just a lot of dual lands. The Sanitarium gives us another discard outlet built into a land, and just a lot of mana fixing to make sure we can cast our spells in a timely fashion. I like playing at least 40 lands in most of my Brawl decks, and no different here. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see what the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Itali, a ramp deck, and it's a pretty scary matchup since our opponent could hit some of our expensive cards for free with their own Itali, but uh, this seems like a keeper. Bolt can maybe kill a mana creature if they're playing those. Maybe worthwhile to play an untapped mountain, although we can still play Bolt off a Signet next turn, so never mind. So we've got turn 2 Signet, turn 3 Simulacrum. And this lines up perfectly. 
And then we can maybe play a demon on the following turn. So what are the two best cards I can get with Burning Rune Demon? Well, there's a Dark Ritual. So with the Ritual, I could cast a Burning Rune right now. Yeah, might as well. Now I don't have time to think about it as much. But uh, one of the considerations was certainly... A uh, Saros Emissary naming creature should be pretty good in the matchup. Could also go for Avacyn, making everything indestructible. So maybe grab those two. And then we'll end up with one in hand and the other in Graveyard to reanimate. Okay, so Emissary naming creature it is. Could still die to a Planeswalker dealing damage, thinking of Luka. There may be some other sorceries that do it as well. And our opponent playing Emrakul as well, that one could be scary. But let's just go for Imburial Rites. Name creature. So now our team is pretty much unblockable. And we can't take any more damage from the opponent's creatures. But we'll see what Itali can hit. They hit Chandra. Okay. And a Carnage Tyrant. That one we don't care about as much. But Chandra combined with a Burn Spell could finish off Sarah's Emissary. Just ends up dealing 2 damage. So we have 13 damage on the board. Can play Crox and Kunuros, although it's not close to doing much here. And uh, don't have another creature to flash back on Burial right? So we probably want to take out Chandra to be safe. 7 damage can go face. And then I don't think we have to worry about Itali transforming either. So let's go for it. And then Crocs and Kunoros versus Solemn is actually kind of interesting. If I play Solemn, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I guess next turn we could play Avacyn. And don't need Cold Steel Heart. Okay, so if something goes wrong, at least we'll still be able to cast Avacyn next turn. Inferno of the Star Mounts, that's fine. So a lot of trampley and flying creatures, but nothing our opponent can do about our team being unblockable here. And now indestructible to boot. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Nahiri, the updated version, and our hand seems fine. Got a bit of ramp, a discard outlet, so ways to fill the graveyard. And uh, no need to play the temple just yet, since I don't know if we need more lands or not. Turn 2 Champion of the Flame can hit pretty hard. So let's play Cold Steel Hearts on... We have a lot of whites, double reds, triple black, so it's either red or white here. Let's go with white since we need triple white for some of our creatures. An axe to equip champion. And a seize the spoils is an option too now. And discard emissary. And realm cloaked will also come in handy. So now maybe play our tap land to scry. And Arcane Signet isn't the worst. Can play it alongside a Vulture, could also just cast Crux and Conoros, hope it survives next turn. And then between Vulture and Looting we should be able to enable it. Not gonna cast Looting right now. 
take another three. And a sledge is next. Okay. So is it time for maybe a Realm Cloak to reset the board? That seems wise. And I can hang on to looting, maybe still cast it next turn. And there's Nahiri. Just gonna make a token, equip for free. We've got our own Nahiri. Although, for now, let's see, we've got two cards in graveyards. So even with the looting and a total of three, we wouldn't quite be able to reanimate anything with Croxa and Kunoros yet. So if we want to get immediate value, maybe start with Vulture and maybe a Reunion here. Can Reunion discarding looting and Zatalpa see what we pick up? Okay, more goodies. And then Doom Whisper is now an option too. That can certainly fill the graveyard for Crocs and Kunoros. And it's a bit bigger than a Vulture. And then I'll still have the mana for Crocs on next turn. Okay. So if we bring back Sarah's Emissary, it's unclear what card type to name. Could be Planeswalker, could be Instant, could be Creature. So Nahiri deals a bit more damage than she used to now. Let's activate Doom Whisper at least once. And an Ancient Brass Dragon's nice too. Do we have enough stuff in the graveyard now is a question. I can reanimate a Brass Dragon. And then hope that can connect. Opponents will have a Nahiri unable to minus three next turn at least. Maybe we dig one more time. Don't think we need to keep a land on top, so let's just fill the graveyard. All right, and then we'll let uh, the damage happen here. Doom Whisper down. So now they give double strike to equipped creatures that are attacking. And a Sentinel. Okay. Time for Croxa and Kunoros. Get rid of some cards we don't care about. And then what to bring back is a question. I'm leaning Ancient Brass Dragon, even though Emissary is most likely to stick around and protect the team. Prevent us from dying next turn. Ancient Brass Dragon is definitely the more fun option if we get to attack and connect with it. A beat stick can grant menace. On the sentinel. So we can block smith. Do we want to block the token here? Yeah, that might be okay. Might be a sweeper incoming. Nahiri's gonna minus. For a Lion Sash, that one would have been pretty effective earlier, as Graveyard Hate. And are gonna exile Emissary right away. Well, at least they're tapped out now. And uh, I can use Nahiri to discard Balefire Dragon and then bring it back with our Brass Dragon potentially. Could also go for Shieldreds. And then do I pay the two? I don't have to, and I can still play Vulture afterwards. Could also exile the Esper Sentinel as another potential option, but... Yeah, Shielded versus Dragon. Maybe go for Dragon. And then should play Vulture first in case we mill something even better. And of course need to enable Crocs and Conorus as well. So let's attack. 
and then exile a couple of lanes and Doom Whisper. And go for Balefire, I think, over Zatalpa, although Zatalpa gives us more sweeper insurance. Don't think the equipment deck's necessarily playing those. And roll the 10. So we get to bring back Zatalpa and uh, I guess the Master Smith as well. Okay, not bad. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a Jetmere and Nexus of Revels tokens. So having a Wrath of God seems pretty important. So I'm keeping. Okay, maybe discard altar to the looting. I don't think we'll really need it. And what else do we discard? Could be a land. Yeah, maybe it's just a smashing. Even though it can clear a few tokens, we have a Wrath of God. So, would rather have the black and white mana. So we'll just uh, fetch up a planes here, I suppose. Opponent with a turn two Gala Greeters. So the question will be, how long do we wait on Wrath of God? Don't want him getting too much value from Greeters either. Now we could flash back looting, although it's going to be a while before we can actually reanimate Shieldred. So maybe play Celestus. Fable of the Mirror Breaker is next. So they're not really committing too many tokens at the moment. Okay, salvaging can come in handy. So, could main phase salvaging, or can play it at instant speed during the opponent's turn. Maybe flashback looting first, just to fill the graveyard for Crox and Kunoros. And then Avacyn and Shieldred can go. And then with Avacyn we can make our team indestructible, and then maybe cast Wrath afterwards. Opponent gets rid of the upgraded Cabaretti Charm. Okay, so they could attack and then have access to 6 mana already. I'm hoping they finally commit some token makers. Nope, it's just going to be a Jetmere. Triggers Greeters. So if we can hold out one more turn on casting Wrath, we can also get the Reflection of Kiki Jiki. Although opponent may present lethal before that happens, Eidolon's fine. So we may not have the luxury of waiting. Discard pathway, I have double wide thanks to the Celestus. Okay, and an Elish Norn. So can cast Croxa, get back Avacyn. And then we would have two indestructible creatures. Hopefully that's enough to survive. And then next turn Wrath of God. Could also go for Shieldred, but can maybe get it back once we attack with Crocs and Kunoros. So yeah, let's give it a try. Could also get Shieldred, and that way we can make the opponent sack a creature. Although if they make enough tokens, they could still maybe give the team double strike. And then we won't have profitable blocks lined up, whereas Avacyn at least makes our team indestructible. So I think Avacyn's the safer play. And then we're not too far from hard casting Elish Norn, which will also be quite devastating against the tokens deck. You meet in a tavern, looking at the top five, finds a dryad, that's fine. And our opponent has to pass, even picked up another board wipe here. Don't really have a strong preference between the two, maybe start with Realm Cloaked, in case they can somehow exile my uh, Avacyn. 
so we don't destroy our own Crocs and Conuros. And then now hit for 14. Don't have quite enough cards in Graveyard to bring back Shieldred, but that's okay. An Eternal Wander is next, alright, so that can get rid of the indestructible Avacyn. Let us keep Crocs and Conuros. So we can put the opponent to 5 and let them keep the Eternal Wander for an extra turn since we can easily clear the token and then play a Priest of Felrites. That seems fine. Another play we can make is to use Cut on our own creature just so we put it in the graveyard so we can cast the Aftermath half of it since our opponent's at 5 so another untapped land would do it. Don't know if that's quite necessary. So maybe just activate Celestus instead. And discard maybe Elishnorn. So we can also bring it back with Priest. Don't expect too much graveyard hate in this matchup. Your opponent's gonna plus one on the Priest. Although Crocs and Conurus still represents lethal. So they need to generate a few blockers. They played Crucible instead of channeling it, so they have other plans. It's gonna be a gold span dragon. But it's gotta play defense here unless they've got another spell they can cast. Gristlebrands, we probably won't be able to cast anytime soon. So how about a cut on the gold span? And an attack for six. And then I can maybe reanimate Gristlebrand while we're at it. And draw a few cards before dealing lethal. Just because. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Johnny Sleeper Agent, so green-white plus one counters, and we've got a Keeper. Cold Steel Heart has a bit of ramp, and then multiple ways to fill the graveyard or discard expensive creatures if we draw them. Opponent's got to turn to into the north for ramp. Can get a snow-covered plains, perhaps. Uh, let's go for white since we have a lot of double and triple white cards. Don't have as many double reds. So there's a Jenny. Finding Toski for now. Okay, play a Cemetery Tampering and then uh, hope to be able to put some expensive creatures in graveyard soon. And a Breach the Multiverse is a nice one to cast for free. Although I don't know if we'll get to 20 cards. I guess Doomspur is a good way to get there. So maybe we'll just go all in, even if it costs us a lot of life. And Jani up to 6 loyalty, so they're not too far from an ultimate. And Anissa, that one's good too. So we're in a bit of trouble here. I'm hoping this Doom Whisper play works out. Mesmeric Orb could also be pretty nice, but uh, yeah, how about a 6 6 flyer that does more? And then we can wait until the end step to activate it a bunch. Opponent does go for the Ajani Ultimate, so if they can cast 5 creatures, we're dead. Bones got five cards in hand, so we'll see here. Giant Killer, step one, is not bad. So our opponent can hit us for nine pretty easily if they activate Loam Speaker and animate another land with Nyssa. Wrath of God would be nice to keep, but I think we just gotta go for Broke. So 
So we have currently seven cards in Graveyard. This makes it nine. Ten, eleven. Twelve, thirteen. And then this would add three more. I can cast Thrill in response to the Tampering to add two more. So not quite there yet. But if I activate it once again, we could just be dead on board. So 15, 16, 17, 18, and then three more from Tampering should do it. So yeah, make sure to put an upkeep stop. Well, Vorinclex, that was unexpected. And then now they can untap a land and add double the counters. So now we're taking lethal. Yeah, that's too bad. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Ourobrask, which is typically a storm combo deck. Our hand's not gonna cut it without red. This is better. So we're looking at Fabled Passage for Swamp. And then we may want to play Celestus, use it to discard something expensive and then set up our Unburial Rites. So we could maybe reanimate Gristlebrand. Play our tapped Trium. See, so yeah, our opponent's probably going to play Orobrask and then cast a whole bunch of spells in the same turn. Sort of a once in future could also be effective against us. Now it's actually interesting whether we Fable or Celestus. I guess Fable's higher upside, since I can discard both Unburial Rites and Gristlebrand. And uh, just flash back Unburial Rites even if the Shaman dies. Three mana light of the stage is not too concerning. But they have removal for the Shaman. Alright, let's stick to the plan. Turn four Gristlebrand should be pretty effective. All right. There's Urbrask. And we're just gonna take our draw step for now. Get a hidden for seven, and then we'll decide how many cards we want to draw with Gristlebrand. Start with one activation. We've earned it. And ideally we find removal for Urbrask, found a Lightning Bolt, that doesn't quite do it. Play a Command Tower for now. Still no real answers for Urbrask. Can of course keep digging, can develop our mana with Celestus and Arcane Signet, and then hope they can combo off in one turn with Urbrask. At 18 I feel pretty safe, I don't necessarily want to go to 11. Yeah, let's us just play some ramp artifacts. Play Signets. Could also play Cold Steel Hearts or Guardian Idol here. And be tapped out. I don't think we need Lightning Bolt. Okay. And then discard a bunch to hand size. I guess we have to keep seven cards and discard the rest. That's been a relatively recent change in the interface, which is helpful in these situations. So I'll definitely keep Breach, and then Bolt might be worth keeping. At least a land. Pyromancer might be good. Nahiri. Gearhulk we can also hard cast. Not super interested in anything else. I guess we could cast the Combustible Gearhulk as well. Alright. Pretty good hand still. But yeah, Ourobrask can certainly do some damage here. So now it's the opponent's turn to combo off. And a Fumarole is gonna attempt to take out Gristlebrand here with another burn spell. That's okay, we got our value. Artist we can kill with a Bolt. And a Braid will finish off Gristlebrand. So they still have some mana left over. Equip 
Absort on Orbrask. Okay. Can jump here to deny them getting back a burn spell. May as well, since otherwise they just kill Reflection anyway. Alright, so where do we start? Cast Breach the Multiverse. And get back, at the very least, Gristlebrand. Avacyn is an option too. So may want a Lightning Bolt to Artist to guarantee something on the opponent's side of the battlefield to bring back. And what do we like? On the opponent's side we have Arclight and Stormkiln, probably Stormkiln. And then maybe an Ancient Gold Dragon since they cannot attack past it with a sword. Avacyn's also good insurance, although not quite as fun, I would say, in this spot. Okay. And then we'll just pass it back for now. And we played Supplier first, so it's not like I could have blocked Urbrask with protection from black. So our opponent's going to start with Strike at Rich. Maybe they can attempt to transform Urbrask this turn. Increasing Vengeance to copy it. Phase Breaker. Okay. Last turn I also could have used Nahiri to just exile Urbrask. Might have been the safer play, but who wants to give up on a Breach the Multiverse? Okay, that's an interesting attack from Urbrask. I think we block with the Dragon. There's a small chance they can finish it off, but then we can still bring it back with Croxa. So this might be a desperate attempt. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Omnath, a locus of all. So they're probably packing lots of three-color cards. Our hand's not bad. Can go for turn one Black Market Connections, which is pretty sweet. Avacyn's Pilgrim's nice too, off a uh, turn one Forest. Don't know how many untapped green sources the Omnath deck has access to, but they found a one. And then we can definitely make treasure, probably draw a card as well early on. Not super interested in the shapeshifter. Okay, so we can cast a 3-drop if we'd like. Or we can just go for Guardian Idol and then build up our mana to maybe ramp out Crocs and Clonorus ahead of schedule. We've got Vulture and Discovery to fill our graveyard for it. Ooh, Thali on the Gidrog. Yeah, that's going to punish our non-basics. So treasure and draw. So I have one basic left in hand. So... Could just play Vulture, hang on to my treasures. And then next turn go for a big play. We may be able to both cast Discovery to put the last couple cards in Graveyard, as well as Crocs and Conoros. Get to untap. Now our opponent does have quite a bit of mana available. Potentially could represent a Counterspell. So, not sure if this is going to work. But uh, got to give it a shot. So a Thrilling Discovery first. Discard Dragon and Aurelia. Okay, and then we've got a couple basics we can play that enter untapped. And uh, yeah, let's give it a shot. That resolves. Okay, so no point in getting a tapped Aurelia. So may as well go for the Ancient Gold Dragon here.
and we'll hang back in case we want to chum block. And our opponent explodes, yeah, the Ancient Gold Dragon's gonna hit them, and that's probably gonna be game over. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Rocco, Street Chef, and we've got a hand featuring Mesmeric Orb into an early Black Market Connections. Can ramp out Doomspur, even though these both cost us quite a bit of life to enable Croxa. Yeah, this seems worth keeping. Don't have any cheap removal, which could be a concern. Get this uh, Triome in play. Also, this can potentially preserve some of the plus one counters. Morocco is going to be awkward against us since we'll end up exiling expensive creatures that we cannot cast to begin with. Okay, turn to Mindstone, I don't mind. And then next turn, go for Connections. Maybe just try to ramp into an Itali and ignore Croxa for a second. Opponent doesn't have the right mana to cast Rocco, so go with Connection still. And it's going to be an inspiring call to draw a card, basically. That's fine. Opponent still needs either red or white mana to cast. Rocco goes for you find some prisoners as opposed to destroying Mindstone. And finally found their land they needed. Okay. Take two more. And definitely want to make a treasure. Do we want to draw a card as well? Against this opponent, that may not be necessary. Just make a treasure. And cast a tally. And hope it survives. Next turn we can play a Doom Whisper. Plus maybe a timed Godless Shrine. And then Doom Whisper can fill the graveyard for Croxa. Invasion distributes a bunch more counters. But no attack. Alright. So let's just make treasure once again and attack and see what we can find. Could also actually set up the top of my deck with Doom Whisper, maybe that's better. And then we get to cherry pick whatever we put on top. Burning Rune isn't bad, but we can probably do better. Alright, so these are both pretty awesome. So maybe, let's see, keep Aurelia on top. Opponent's gonna trade for uh, Itali here, so maybe then just go for Ancient Gold Dragon, Aurelia and the Graveyard. Sure. And attack. So your opponent can trade. But we got our value. And we can keep digging with Doom Whisper to find more goodies to reanimate with Croxa. Could also just play a Mesmeric Orb, which will mill for quite a few cards next turn already. Sure. So then I don't need to pay as much life to the Doom Whisper necessarily. Time for Rocco. Also exiles our top card. So we could try and set that up with Doom Whisper, but let's wait and see what happens. Yeah, I think we'll just let this one happen. Found a land. And uh, yeah, let's just untap, mill a bunch. And then we can maybe surveil afterwards. Although I think it's pretty clear what our plan is this turn. Crox and Kunoros, and bring back Aurelia to set up multiple attack steps. And that should be game with our flyers if there's no interaction. Alright, so lots of goodies in the graveyard. Just take our draw. And I'm gonna avoid giving the opponent any extra plus one counters. Just make a treasure. Play a land from hand. And play Croxa. And I think Aurelia is our targets. 
So exile everything else we don't need. Move to attackers. And hope to get something sweet here. Could also keep surveilling with Doom Whisper. Okay, opponents got a heroic intervention. So it does make their stuff indestructible, but we've got enough flyers here that it shouldn't matter. Let's see if we can hit something else with Itali. Make sure not to kill myself with Doom Whisper. Don't need for X in Arena. Alright, last activation, I think. Shield Root will do. Well, I guess we forgot about Mesmeric Orb when untapping our creatures with Aurelia. That's a little awkward, should have waited. That's fine. Still get to hit the opponent for a whole bunch with the Ancient Gold Dragon. And I guess just kill them before we get to roll a d20, unfortunately. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Atraxa, Praetor's Voice. Our hands could use a cheap reanimation effect, since we have all these discard outlets and some nice creatures to discard. So we'll try. Turn to Thrilling Discovery, discarding probably one creature and a looting, so we can flashback looting on three. That's the best value. And then Gristlebrand, probably the highest upside to reanimate, at least initially. Now we can Fable on three. All their opponents likely to take it. So then we'll flashback looting instead. Dark Ritual is interesting too. What does that enable? Don't quite have enough cards in uh, Graveyard for Croxa, but if we flashback looting, we can set that up next turn. Okay, don't need Temple. And then could discard Aurelia as well. Although let's think about this. So looting is going to get exiled. So we have three, four, five. Next turn, six with the Ritual. So don't necessarily want to discard Aurelia and have to... Exile it with Crocs and Kunoros, so then it might be better off discarding Simulacrum and exiling it and then keeping the big score as another way of discarding Aurelia in future turns. Stitcher Supplier's nice too, but for now we want to get this uh, creature reanimated. That works. So exile everything but Gristlebrand. And reanimate it. Not bad. And then next turn with Supplier we mill 3, big score, discards, and puts itself in the graveyard. So we're at 5, so we'd need one more card to hit the graveyard. But of course we can activate Gristlebrand to help with that as well. Could have activated it right away just to discard to hand size. But uh, may as well take our draw first now. Okay, let's uh, see what we can find. Thoughtseize, that seems effective. So I could Thoughtseize, Big Score, and then Supplier, just to potentially take away a counter spell. <laughs> and our opponent has seen enough. Yeah, this is pretty brutal. Awesome. So yeah, we got to beat one of these four-color Atraxa decks in the final stretch as well, and those are known to be some of the best decks in Historic Brawl, so glad we got to showcase that matchup. But yeah, sometimes you can just cheat a Gristlebrand into play on turn 4, and that will get the job done. So overall, quite pleased with how this Croxa and Konoros deck worked out. It is a pretty high variance deck, admittedly. Sometimes you'll have to mulligan aggressively to get to its explosive openings, but you will get rewarded for it handsomely. And overall, I've been finding it pretty consistent to at least cast your Croxa and Konoros around turn 5 and turn 6 with a full graveyard to reanimate a creature, and that will often get the job done as well. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.